Today I'm delighted to have the opportunity to interview Keith White, who's been playing a huge role at Central Presbyterian the last few weeks, getting us into the live streaming world. So Keith, thank you so much for all you've done for the church, and thank you for uh, letting me talk to you a few minutes this afternoon so yes, people sir. can get to know a little bit about you. First of all, are you from Anderson originally? Originally I'm from Westminster, South Carolina, up in uh, Oconee County. And what brought you to Anderson? Well, um, I, I went to Furman for undergraduate, and then I went, I, I, joined, I went to law school at the University of South Carolina, and when I graduated from there, I ended up in the Marine Corps for four years, and when I got out, I wanted to come back home, and uh, the, uh, I wanted to be a prosecutor. That's one of the things I did in the Marine Corps, and uh, the 10th Circuit Solicitor's Office had an office in Oconee and Anderson. Well, I applied in Oconee, where Westminster's located so I could go back home, but the only openings were in Anderson. So I was hired for the Anderson office, and that's how I ended up here in 1988. All right. And uh, family? Well, I'm, I'm married to Drew Ann White. Uh, I have two biological sons, and uh, we've, uh, we've had foster children we've taken care of over the years. So all together, uh, Let's see, six six children and a lot of grandchildren. A lot of grandchildren. Yeah. Two of them twins that were born Two just twins. recently. Yes, and I Very keep so. them all night every Friday night. Good oh boy. <laughs> Stay up all night. Thank goodness it's not Saturday, right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. I would, I would not be in any condition to help out on Sunday morning. Uh, and how long have you been coming to Central? Uh, well, the whole time uh, I've been here, I think. Yes, um, it's. I'm not sure how many years it's been. It's been years. Yeah, a long time. So, yeah. Uh, Keith sits in the balcony, so if you haven't seen it, that's why you need to move up to the balcony to meet Keith. <laughs> that's right. And you work at Hannah now. You uh, yes. were a lawyer for a while. Now you're teaching. Yes. Uh, uh, the principal at Hannah was Mike Sams when mm -hmm. I first started working there. And uh, my two sons were wrestling for Hannah, and uh, one day the the head coach at Hannah asked me to help out as an assistant wrestling coach. So I started helping out there, and I was enjoying that so much. Uh, I Mike Sams one day um, I met him, and he started talking to me, and he basically recruited me to quit practicing law and become a teacher and a coach. So I I quit, sold everything, and. Uh, started teaching. It was a good decision. And what do you teach? Well, my undergraduate degree was in English, so I started out as an English teacher. And I was in the, um, about six, seven years ago, I was in the department meeting, and no one wanted to teach journalism or broadcast journalism. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't find any volunteers, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll do it. I, have, I don't know how to do it, but I'll, I'll do it if no one else wants to. And so a couple of years after that, at first it was just doing the announcements in the morning and you would tape it on, put it on a, a DVD and it would be played uh, during homeroom and the kids would do the announcements. That was really all there was to do. Well, then they, they built a new, uh, they, they improved the stadium and put the Jumbotron in there and my class took over the Jumbotron. And so that involves shooting commercials and, and graphics and and features and content, things like that, for the Jumbotron and also running the show. And so my responsibilities have expanded over the years. Uh, and so now I started doing live streaming of all the events at Hannah. And, and that's how I sort of, I, I sort of learned here and there how to do it from various people and on the job. And Just trial by error? Trial by error, yes. Yeah, so. Yes. All right. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about the live streaming here at Central and how you got involved in that. Uh, this is a story that needs to be in the next chapter of Central's history book because this was a remarkable story, I thought. On March 15th, which was the last Sunday that we had in-person worship at Central before the big shutdown due to the coronavirus, you had a conversation with Harold Gilbert who's been our longtime sound and video lead man, and you talked to him, I think, about live streaming at that point. Can you tell me a little bit about that conversation and what prompted it? I almost walked out. I, almost, I got up, I started to walk out, and I thought, well, you know, I wonder what the church is going to do. Um, and uh, I, I did not know if anyone knew how to live stream, because it's, it's, it's not something that 
a lot of people know how to do. So um, I, 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 instead of taking a right, I took a left, and I walked over there to, to, to him, and I said, uh, hey, if you need any help, uh, you know, I know how to set up a live stream. That's what I do at Hammond, and I'll be glad to help you out. And so that's, that's how it happened. Uh, you have any regrets about saying that to no, me? No, I don't. No, I've enjoyed it. I really have. Everyone's so nice to work with, and, and uh, uh, it's a lot of fun, actually. I enjoy doing the live stream. Well, from the church side of that, the staff had been talking over the previous couple of days about what were we going to do, and uh, we, we wanted to continue having live worship that people participated in at the same time, but we didn't have that facility. So someone said, well, we can do it on a cell phone and yeah. stream it on Facebook Live, and that would certainly not be nearly as, as polished and nice production. But after church that Sunday when Harold told me that you talked to him about live streaming, I said, that's just an answer to prayer right there because we were just talking about it and we need it. We got six days to get it done. <laughs> Came in here and scrambled and got it done, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, and he's great, by, by the way. Uh, uh, he's so faithful. Every Sunday he's there doing that. Uh, and I know from experience how tough a job that is. It's yeah. not easy to coordinate all the cameras and sound and everything. He's a good guy. Yeah, and if something goes wrong, you get the blame. So That's right. Harold's had to shoulder a lot of that through the <laughs> That's years. Right. He has done a wonderful job for us. Yeah. So Monday of that week, I got your number from uh, your daughter-in-law and mm -hmm. texted you about live streaming and you responded quickly and said you'd be glad to do it. So I think then we met together and talked about it as staff and, mm -hmm. and you started bringing equipment. Yes. Since Hannah was shut down, you were able to bring the equipment that you use over there. Tell yeah. folks about the process and what all's over there. Well, um, this the live streaming I do at Hannah, uh, it's something that I came up with and you know, there really isn't a budget for it at Hannah, so I've had to buy my own stuff over time. And I started with my very first uh, uh, event was a volleyball game, and I had two kids uh, doing the play-by-play, -play, and they had a, a little webcam. They were moving it back and forth like this, you know. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I knew nothing about uh, media switchers, soundboards, or any that sort of thing. And, and over time, I've gradually, I would encounter a problem like, uh, I have an event where I want five people to talk and have good quality sound. I, you know, I need a soundboard. I don't know how to operate one, so I asked someone and learned and added a soundboard. Then I added a media switcher, and uh, and I, every time I would have a birthday come up or Christmas or something, I would ask for a little inexpensive camera, and so that's what we're using now in church, stuff I've accumulated over the years. So we have how many cameras at work over there now? There are eight cameras now. Eight cameras. Eight cameras. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I hope the production values are good. We're, we're trying, to keep it, uh, trying to keep those production values up. So it's, I like to get the whole uh, feeling of the experience of being in church, being in the sanctuary. Uh, I think you've done a great job with that. We've got nothing but thanks and gratitude good. from all the people who have, have worshipped with us that way, so we're very grateful to you for that. Uh, we know that's not going to be able to continue when Hannah's back open and when we're back open because right. there are cameras everywhere. So um, this week we have uh, accepted a bid to purchase some new cameras that can be used from the balcony for that's streaming. Good. So we're going to be getting those installed and uh, we just thank you so much for helping us take the first step. I like to hear the stories of folks who are watching the show from Mexico and other. Oh, yeah. what, are, what kind of places were we uh, are we getting viewers from? Well, Annette Martin's brother has a, a watch party of about twenty people in Mexico That's every really? Sunday. She says, <laughs> and Mimi Anderson says that her sister watches from Germany every week, and others have children who live elsewhere that are watching and worshiping with us. So it's, it's been amazing and. Uh, the numbers of people who watched have been pretty amazing. I think I told you during Holy Week we had double or triple the number we've ever had on really? site That's great. <laughs> for Holy for uh, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services. So uh, hopefully when we're back in the sanctuary, some of those people will decide to come give it a try in person too. You never know who you affect when you do something like that. Uh, I, I did, I was doing... Um, 
volleyball games, as I said, and I heard from one of the volleyball players that her brother was in a bunker in Afghanistan getting mortared while he was watching her game on a wow. laptop. So uh, when you hear stories like that, it, may, it makes you feel good that you're, you know, get, getting word out, getting the message out, getting, a, getting the show out so people can see it. You know? For sure. So thanks to all who have shared stories like that with us. And if you got some you hadn't shared yet, send them in and we'll share them with Keith and everybody else. So this story today has been making me think about the story of Esther in the Old Testament. Esther uh, was chosen for her beauty to become the queen of Persia when the Jews were in exile. That's not the part that reminds me of you. Okay. But uh, her, her beauty made her the queen, but her Jewishness put her in a position where she could make a difference that nobody else could have at that point. Uh, she was the queen at a very perilous time in, in life for the Jews, and she was the only person who could intercede with the king about making a difference in that, and she was scared to do it. Her cousin was pushing her to do it, and she was scared to do it because of the risk that it would acquire, and her cousin said to her, well, who knows? You might have been put in this position for just such a moment as this. So I'm thinking you were sitting up there in the balcony for just such a moment as this, and it's always great when people find that their talents and abilities and interests merge with something that God needs. So thank you for stepping up that day and for going yes, left sir. instead of right and for uh, making such a huge difference at Central Presbyterian Church. Well, God thanks bless for you. the opportunity. I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes with me today. Absolutely.